I, I was trying to think, what did I say that, that could actually be helpful or useful to you in the future? And uh, I thought I'd perhaps uh, tell the story of how I sort of came to be here. How did some of these things happen? And, and maybe there's some lessons there, because um, I, I often find myself wondering how did this happen. So when I was young, I, I, uh, I didn't really know what I was going to do uh, when, I, when I got older. But, but then eventually I thought that the idea of inventing things would be, would be really cool. Uh, the, the reason I thought that was because I, I read a quote from Arthur C. Clarke which said that a sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And, and that's really true. Um, if, you if you go back, say, 300 years, the things that we take for granted today uh, would be, you'd, you'd be burned at the stake for. You know, being able to fly, that's crazy. Uh, being able to see over long distances, being able to communicate, having um, effectively, w with, with the internet, a group mind of sorts, um, and having access to all the world's information uh, instantly from almost anywhere on the earth. This is stuff that, that really would be magic, that would be considered magic um, in, in times past. In fact, I think it actually goes beyond that because there are many things that we take for granted today that weren't even imagined in, in times past. They weren't even in the realm of magic. So it actually goes, goes beyond that. So I thought, well, you know, if, if, if I can do some of those things, basically if, if, if I can advance technology, then that, that's like magic and that would be really cool. And I always had sort of a slight existential crisis because I was trying to figure out what, what does it all mean? Like what's the purpose of things? And I came to the conclusion that if, if we can advance the, the knowledge of the world, if we can do things that expand the scope and, and, and scale of consciousness, then we're better able to ask the right questions and become more enlightened, and and that's really the only way forward. So, so I, I, I studied uh, physics and business because I figured in order to do a lot of these things, you, you need to know how the universe works and you need to know how, how, how the economy works. And you also need to be able to bring a lot of people together to work with you to create something, because it's very difficult to do something as as an individual if it's if it's a significant technology. I originally came out to, to California to uh, try to figure out how to improve the energy density of, of, of electric vehicles, basically to, to try to figure out if there was an advanced capacitor that, that, that could serve as an alternative to batteries. And um, that was in 95, and that's also when the internet uh, started to happen. And it, I, I, I thought, well, I can either pursue this, tech, this technology where success may, be, may not be one of the possible outcomes, which is always tricky, or participate in the internet and, and be, be part of it. So I decided to, to drop out, did some internet stuff, one of which was PayPal. And, and I think maybe it's helpful to say one of the things that was important then in the creation of PayPal was, uh, was, was kind of how it started because th the initial thought was for, with PayPal was to create an agglomeration of financial services. So, so to have one place where all of your financial services needs would be seamlessly integrated and, and, and work smoothly. And then we had like a little feature which was to do email payments. And whenever we'd show the, show the system off to someone, uh, we'd show the hard part which was the, um, the agglomeration of financial services which was quite difficult to, to put together. Nobody was interested. Then we'd show people email payments, which was actually quite easy, and everybody was interested. So I think it's important to, to, to take feedback from your environment. You know, it's, it, you, you want to be as closed loop as possible. It's, so we focused on email payments and really try to make that work, and, and that's what really got things to take off. But, but if, we hadn't, if we hadn't responded to what people said, then we, we, we probably would not have been successful. So it, it's important to look for things like that and, and focus on them when, when, you, when you see them and get correct uh, your, your prior assumptions. Go, going from PayPal, what, what, what are some of the, the, the other problems that uh, are likely to most affect the, the future of humanity? It really wasn't from the perspective of what, what's the rank ordered best way to, to make money, um, which, which, is, which is okay, but w w what I think is going to most affect the future of humanity. So I, I think the, the, the biggest terrestrial problem we've got is uh, sustainable energy but the production and consumption of energy in a sustainable manner. If we don't solve that this, this century, this, this century we're, we're in deep trouble. And then the, the other one being the extension of life beyond Earth to make life multiplanetary. So that's the basis for, the, the latter is the basis for, for SpaceX and the former is the basis for 
Tesla and, and Solar City. And, and when I started SpaceX, um, I, it, it actually, it, initially, I thought that, well, there's, there's no way one could possibly start a rocket company. Uh, I wasn't that crazy. But, but then I, I thought, well, what is a way to increase NASA's budget? That was actually my initial goal. So I, I thought, well, if we can do a low-cost mission to Mars, something called Mars Oasis, which would land seeds with, uh, with, dehydrate, with, with seeds and dehydrated nutrient gel, and you hydrate them upon landing, and then you'd have this great sort of money shot of green plants on a red background. And the, the public tends to respond to um, uh, precedents and superlatives, and this would be the first life on Mars, the furthest that life's ever traveled, as far as we know. And, and I thought, well, that, that would get people really excited and, and, uh, and therefore increase NASA's budget. So, so obviously, the, the financial outcome from such a mission would probably be zero. So anything better than that was on the upside. So I actually went to, I went to Russia three times to, to look at buying a refurbished ICBM because that, that was the best deal. And uh, I can tell you it was very weird going there in, in 2000, late 2001, 2002 going to the Russian rocket forces and saying, I'd like to buy two of your biggest rockets, uh, but you can keep the nuke. <laughs> that, that's a lot more. Um, and uh, that was 10 years ago, I guess, so they thought I was crazy. But, but I did have money, so that was, that was okay. After making several trips to, to Russia, I, I came to the conclusion that that actually, uh, uh, my, my initial impression was was wrong about because my initial thought was well that that there's not enough will to explore and expand beyond Earth and have a Mars base and that kind of thing. But I came to the conclusion that 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 was wrong. Um, in fact, there's plenty of will, particularly in the United States, uh, because the United States is a nation of explorers, of people who came here from from other parts of the world. And I think in, in the United States is really a distillation of the, the spirit of human exploration. But, but if people think it's impossible, then, or it's gonna completely break the federal budget, then they're not gonna do it. So af after my third trip, I said, okay, well, what we really need to do here is try to solve the, the space transport problem and, uh, and started SpaceX. And uh, this, this was against the advice of pretty much everyone I talked to. But one friend made me sit down and watch a bunch of videos of rockets blowing up. Let me tell you, he wasn't far wrong. The thing, thing, it, was, it was tough going there in the beginning uh, because I'd never built anything physical. I mean, I'd built like little model rockets as a kid and that kind of thing, but um, I never had a company that built anything physical. So I had to figure out how to, how to do all these things and, and bring together the right team of people. And so we, we, we did all that and, and then failed three times. Um, it, it, it was tough, tough going. Because the thing about a rocket is that the, the, the passing grade is 100%. And uh, you, you don't get to actually test the rocket in the real environment that it's going to be in. So I think so the best analogy for, for rocket engineering is, is like if you want to create a really com complicated bit of software, um, you, you can't run the software as an integrated whole, and you can't run it on the computer it's intended to run on. But the first time you put it all together and run it on that computer, it must run with no bugs. That's, that's basically the essence of it. So, so we, we missed the mark there. The, the first launch, I was picking up bits of rocket near the, near the launch site, it was a bit sad. And uh, but we, we, we learned with, with each successive flight and, uh, and were able to, with, uh, eventually with the fourth flight in 2008, uh, reach orbit. And that was also with the last bit of money that we had. Thank, thank goodness uh, that, that happened. It, I think the saying is fourth time's the charm. So, that, so we, we got the Falcon 1 to orbit and then uh, began to scale that up to, to the Falcon 9, which is um, about an order of magnitude more a thrust. It's uh, around a million pounds of thrust. And we managed to get that to orbit and then uh, developed a Dragon spacecraft, uh, which um, recently was able to dock and return to Earth from the space station. That was a white knuckled event. So uh, yeah, it's a, it's a huge relief. Still can't quite believe it actually happened. But, but there's a lot more that, ha that, that, that must happen beyond this in order for humanity to, be, to become a spacefaring civilization, and ultimately um, a multi-planet species. And that's something I think it's, it's, it's vitally important. And, and I hope um, that, that some of you will, will participate in, in that, either at SpaceX or, or at other companies, because it's just really one of the, the, 
the most important things for the preservation and extension of consciousness. I mean, it's worth noting, as I'm sure people are aware, that the Earth has been around for four billion years, and civilization, at least in terms of having writing, has been around for 10,000 years, and that's being generous. And I think um, I, I'm actually I'm actually fairly optimistic about the future of Earth. So I don't want to I don't want to sort of people to have the wrong impression that I think we're all about to die. I think things will most likely be okay for a, for a long time on Earth, but not not for sure, but most likely. But but even if it's if it's sort of 99% likely, one, a one percent chance is still it's still worth spending a fair bit of effort to ensure that we have um, we've backed up the biosphere, you know, planetary redundancy, if you will. And so I think I think it's really really quite important. And in, in order to do that, there's a breakthrough that needs to occur, which is to create a, a rapidly and completely reusable. Um, transport system to Mars, which, which is one of those things that's right on the borderline of, of, of impossible. Um, but that, that's sort of the, the thing that we're, we're going to try to achieve there with, with, with SpaceX. And then uh, on, the, on, the, on the Tesla front, uh, the, the goal with Tesla was really to try to show that what, what electric cars can do, because people had the wrong impression. We had to change people's perception of an electric vehicle, because they used to think of it as something that was slow and ugly and had low range, kind of like a golf cart. Um, and, and so that's why we created the Tesla Roads to show that you can be fast, um, attractive, and, and long range. And, and it's amazing how, uh, even though you can show that something works on paper, uh, you know, and, and the calculations are very clear, until you actually have the physical object and they can they can drive it, it doesn't really sink in for people. Um, and so that that I think is is something worth noting. If if you're going to create a company, the first thing you should try to do is create a working prototype. Um, you know everything everything looks great on PowerPoint, um, but if you have a, if you have an actual demonstration article, even if it's in primitive form, that's much much more effective for convincing people. I, I think the, the, the overarching point I want to make is that um, you, know, you, you guys are the, the magicians of the 21st century. Don't let anything hold you back. Imagination is, is the limit. Um, and um, go out there and create some magic. Thank you.